Hello, I'm Jennifer Barclay. I'm a doctor based in the North West. I don't come from a traditional medical background and didn't think that medicine was for people like me, but I was completely wrong. Hi, my name is Sarah Ann Filson. I am an infectious diseases and microbiology registrar currently working at King's College Hospital. Hi, I'm Jenny Hyam. I'm currently Principal of St George's and Chair of Medical Schools Council for the country. So I think for me the best part of medicine are those moments when you know you do make a difference and you've touched someone's life. Sometimes it's actually consoling people and helping people adjust, but even that helps them through things. It's going through those difficulties and taking them on a journey with it, I think. I think one of the things that makes medicine such an incredible career is the privilege that comes with it. I think it's, it's, it's the type of thing that you won't understand until you become a doctor or be become a medic. The wonderful thing about medicine is it doesn't matter what you're interested in, what your personality type, whether you like doing practical things with your hands, whether you like you're very cerebral and you like to just think about things, there is a place for you in medicine. I have a lot of patients that turn around and go, oh, um, you must be really intelligent, you must be really academic. Um, and don't get me wrong, you have to get appropriate grades, but I've never thought of myself <laughs> in that way. And I don't think you quite have to be um, completely cerebral and academic. I think it's about a lot of the other qualities. I would agree with you completely that I would perhaps would be intimidated to think I'm not so clever. But the main thing is sticking at it and keeping chugging on is actually a very important characteristic. I would say I think one of the most important skills or traits you have to have to be a good doctor is to be a good communicator. There have been times where I've seen patients and I don't feel like I've known the diagnosis or been actually able to help them on a practical level, but just being there, being able to talk with them, laugh with them sometimes and understand what it is they're going through really makes a difference. I think that at each stage there are hurdles. I mean, there is a minimum academic requirement in terms of getting your A-levels and then uh, getting through the examinations and other assessments. And a lot of these are practical rather than theoretical. Um, and then entering your specialty, most of those specialties have postgraduate examinations. So then you're both working and studying. So that's another challenge. Um, that's definitely true. I mean, uh, you do do a lot of exams, unfortunately, throughout your medical career. But I mean, I'm a little bit of a geek at heart in that I, one of the main reasons I picked medicine is because I like the idea of continual development and continual learning. Having said that, nobody really likes sitting exams. You kind of get used to them over a um, period of time. You essentially set up your own technique and you learn how to go through the, the process of taking multiple exams. Work experience and insight into the profession can be gained in a huge variety of ways and most people now have means of getting appropriate experience where you don't rely on connections. Jobs, part-time jobs, volunteering, all sorts of other social interactions are really relevant. Healthcare, caring activities. I did find it difficult getting work experience. I didn't have connections, I didn't really know where to go, I found it difficult to find advice. But I'd had some um, experience with healthcare through my family and, and caring for people in my family and things like that. That's something that I spoke about in an interview and that's something that uh, gave me an insight into it and, and part of the reason I was interested in medicine in the first place. A couple of the things that people can do is initially they can contact their local hospitals, see if they have a, a, a central unit that deals with work experience. If not, they might have a way in which you can volunteer within the hospital. A lot of nursing homes will quite happily have volunteers in. There are um, other options like doing things like the St John's Ambulance, um, various other caring things that you can do within the community that show that actually you, you have an interest in, at least in, in caring for people but also specifically within healthcare. In general, the A-levels have to have a scientific basis or some people come into medicine after they've done a degree in other aspects but also we're looking for personal attributes and uh, many of the interviews aren't so much about knowledge but they're about how you would react and respond in various challenging or other situations. So we're trying to judge 
how you're going to interact with people, or also showing evidence of having empathy. If you've decided that that's what you want to do, don't give up, just keep going. I think perseverance is very important when it comes to studying medicine and applying for medicine, so I think that would be a take home. Please don't think it's not for you. If, if you're relatively bright and you're determined and you want to do it, really do try. And say you don't do medicine, there are hundreds of wonderful careers within the health service where you can have all the positive benefits that we've talked about.